Hi friends, my name is Baji. Welcome back to our channel. In our last video, we talked about InflexDB and Grafana integration. This is one of the important concepts. So every performance test engineer should know this integration process. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend watching it first and then continuing this video. In today's video, we will understand the process of integrating JMeter with Jenkins. So let's get started right away. So what is Jenkins? Jenkins is an automation platform that allows you to automate all sorts of tasks related to building, testing and delivering or deploying the software. In Jenkins, there are two important terms that we need to be aware of and they are job and build. Basically a job is a description of work that Jenkins should perform such as building a piece of software and a build is the result of a single execution of a job. Whenever Jenkins is discussed, these terms will come up so often. Okay. There will be two build types that Jenkins administrators will mainly use to configure the jobs and they are freestyle project and pipeline. Freestyle projects are the traditional and simpler way of creating builds in Jenkins. In a freestyle project, we configure the build steps in the form of a list of commands using a graphical user interface. Pipeline projects introduced with Jenkins 2.0 it provides a way to express the entire build process as code. They are based on the Groovy scripting language and they group all different tasks and divide them into stages. Pipelines are defined in a Jenkins file which can be stored along with your source code in version control. This approach promotes the concept of pipeline as code. The pipeline script defines stages, steps and conditions for the entire build and deployment process. Some of the common stages are clone, build, test and deploy etc. After hearing about Jenkins, you might be wondering why it is relevant for performance test engineers, right? These days, organizations are showing more interest in DevOps culture because it offers numerous benefits that contribute to enhanced efficiency, collaboration and overall business success. It can help them to accelerate the delivery of software. It can also help them to release quality and reliable products in the market. The streamlined and automated workflows in a DevOps environment enable faster development cycles and quicker delivery of features to end users okay this devops culture can be successfully implemented by following ca cd practices so what is ca cd ca stands for continuous integration and cd stands for continuous deployment or delivery this approach enables developers to deploy the code to a shared repository with reduced concerns about merge conflicts and other challenges that were there in the traditional model okay let's say the developer created a pull request to merge his or her code to a shared repository. Once the PR or pull request is approved, then his or her code will be merged into the main branch. That will trigger a series of steps. Initially, a build will be created using build tools like Maven, Gradle, etc. And then it will trigger the automated testing activities. Once the testing is successful, then it will trigger the vulnerability scans to ensure that there are no security related issues with the new build. Once it passes this stage, then the build will be uploaded to a build repository like JFrog, Nexus, etc. This completes the process of continuous integration. After that, the new build will be deployed in QA staging environments and finally to production environment. This concludes the continuous deployment or delivery process. The difference between continuous delivery and deployment is that the continuous delivery needs some manual trigger before production deployment, while continuous deployment is an automated deployment to production environment along with other non-production environments. So companies are expecting some type of performance test executions to be part of the testing stage in the continuous integration process. By integrating performance tests into the CACD pipeline, development teams can detect and address performance issues earlier, ensuring that the application meets the desired performance criteria before it is deployed to production. Jenkins integrates all these stages within the continuous integration process and that's why we should have some Jenkins knowledge. In real time, we may work with Jenkins administrators or dev teams to integrate the performance tests into CACD pipeline. Okay, now let's understand the process of installing Jenkins and integrating the JMeter. Okay, so before you download and install the Jenkins software, you need to make sure a couple of things. One, you should not use port 8080 for any other application because by default Jenkins will use that port. Okay, let's say if you are planning to deploy JPEG to a demo application as a Docker container, that application will also use 8080 port. So if you are following my videos and then installing it as a Docker container, then you might be using the Docker run command as this, right? Here we are specifying port 8080 for both host port as well as the container port. Okay, so if you want to set up Jenkins in the same system where this JPEG store is running, then 
you need to switch the host port to some other port for this jpet store demo application because if we are using the same port then it will create a conflict between jenkins and the jpet store demo application so what you can do is you can rerun the docker command by changing the host port from 8080 to 9000 okay and the second thing you need to ensure is that wherever you are planning to install the jenkins software you should ensure that jdk is already installed on that system either 11 or 17 or 21 so if you want to know how to verify whether that system has jdk already installed or not so the way we can do is open the terminal and then type java c hyphen hyphen version if you are getting the version details as a response that means jdk is already installed okay here i got the response as java c21.0.1 that means jdk21 is already installed on the system we can also use another command to confirm that jdk is already installed on the system so we should type where java c it will give you the path where exactly this java c nothing but java compiler is available so if you see the output it is telling that this java c.exe is available in c program files java jdk21 so that means this java compiler is being referred from this directory okay you can also go to program files and then also manually check if jdk is already installed so program files and then go to java if jdk is already installed then it will show you a folder with the name jdk and the version number okay once you confirm that prerequisites are met and the next step is to download and install the jenkins software to download the jenkins software open the browser and then type jenkins download and specify the operating system since it is a windows operating system i'm going to specify as windows but if it is a mac or linux then you can specify that particular operating system information okay after that press enter from the search results go to jenkins official website by clicking the jenkins download and deployment link if you scroll a little bit down here they have organized their installer based on the operating system so since again it is a windows operating system i'm going to click on the windows link but if it is a mac os or any other operating system click on the appropriate link okay if you are using any other operating system other than windows then follow the instructions provided in the jenkins official website because the steps for windows and other operating system is little bit different so once we click the windows link what it will do is it will try to download that installer and it will store it in the downloads folder so the download is in progress it may take couple of seconds to download that installer from this official website so once the download is done we should go to the downloads folder and then double click the jenkins installer file to start the installation process so let's double click this jenkins installer file which will open up the jenkins setup wizard so here we need to click next and in the destination folder section we need to specify where exactly we want this jenkins software to be installed by default it will recommend to install it in c program files but if you want to have it in a separate directory please select by clicking the change and if you are okay with the default directory recommendation then you simply click next and here we need to specify the local or domain user account since this is not a server and we are only using for our learning purpose we can select run service as a local system even though it is not a recommended option okay and then click next and here we need to choose a port by default it will show you 8080 port if you want to check if any other application is using this port then you can click the test port what it will do is it will check for the conflicts if there are no conflicts then it will provide you a green tick that means we can use this port 8080 and below that it is also recommending to accept the selected default port and that is the reason i have mentioned to use other port for jpet store demo application okay and then click next here we need to select the jdk path so if jdk is already installed on the system then click change and then select the jdk directory after that click ok and then click next and here it is giving some features information we don't need to make any changes here we just need to click next and then finally click install so that will start the actual installation if you are getting the user account control pop-up message then click yes and it may take a couple of seconds to complete the installation process once the installation is done then we will be getting this completed message so click finish to exit the setup wizard okay with this step we have completed the jenkins installation so go to browser and then open a separate tab and type http localhost port 8080 this will launch the jenkins ui so by default it will ask you to input the administrator password 
so we need to go to this particular path to get that initial admin password okay so copy this entire path and then open a new tab and paste it and press enter that will give us the password once you copy the initial admin password and then paste it here okay and then click continue so in this screen it is asking us to install some plugins so it is recommending to use suggested plugins or we also have an option to select the appropriate plugins since we are in the beginning stage click install suggested plugins so that whatever it is required for jenkins those plugins will be automatically installed so click install suggested plugins that will install all the required plugins for jenkins okay it may take a minute to complete all this plugins installation process so once the plugins installation is done then jenkins will ask us to create the first admin user so fill in all the username password information since this is an admin user i'm going to use username as admin and password and then password type username as admin it can be anything okay and then click save and continue so then it will give us the jenkins url so this is the url we need to use whenever we want to open the jenkins ui and click save and finish and it will give a message saying that jenkins is ready so we can start using the jenkins so click start using jenkins button it will open up the jenkins ui so in real time we might not be using all the options available in the jenkins ui we may be using some options because most of the options are being controlled by jenkins administrators okay but still we'll try to understand on a high level what exactly those options are so on the left we have dashboard link which will take us to the home page of this jenkins if you are into different screens and if you want to come back to jenkins home page then you should click the dashboard link okay and then we have new item this is where we will be creating projects and pipelines so here you will specify whether you want to create a freestyle project or pipeline project okay we will come back to this screen once we start creating these freestyle projects and pipelines and the next thing is people this is where the jenkins administrator will create new users so that those users will also log into jenkins new way and then do their respective tasks so the next thing is build history and this build history will gives you all the jobs information that has been executed in the past okay since we did not executed anything we don't see any information here but once we start executing the jobs then we will be seeing some history information here okay and the next option is manage jenkins so this is where we will do some system wide configuration like updating the plugins or creating some nodes or updating some global settings and also configuring some security related information okay and then we have my views so using this my views we can organize our jobs okay so on the right we have search with which we can quickly navigate to any specific section and then we have the user information so this will tell us which user has logged in currently to the jenkins ui and finally log out to log out from the jenkins okay before we actually integrate jmeter with this jenkins we will create a freestyle project as well as a pipeline project to understand the basic concepts of job and builds okay so click new item and then specify the item name my freestyle demo job and then select the freestyle project and click okay that means we are creating a freestyle project with the name my freestyle demo job okay and if you want to give any description you can type the description in the general section and there are some options to select for this particular project and the next section is source code management let's say if your code or scripts are there in github then you can use this source code management to refer those github repositories so you can select git and then provide the repository information since we don't have anything in github we should select none and then next we need to specify the build trigger if you want this build to be triggered automatically or periodically or using some github hooks then you can select the appropriate option in this demo we will be manually triggering the build so we don't need to select any option here and then we need to configure the build environment information so whenever we executed the build it will create a workspace and will store all the files in that workspace if you want to delete that workspace before build starts then you should select this option and there is an advanced option also you can specify what are all the different files to be deleted from that workspace okay and if you want to use some secret text or files you can select this and then provide that information and if you want to add timestamps to the output you have to select this add timestamp so that for every entry in the output you can see a timestamp and we do have some other options which will be used to configure the build environment and the next section is build steps this is the most important section and this is where we actually provide all the instructions to 
Jenkins. So click add build step. Here we will have different options like we can execute Windows batch command as a build step or we can even execute shell script as a batch step or you can invoke ant or gradle scripts. Okay. Since this is a Windows machine, I'm selecting execute Windows batch command wherein I can type all the list of batch commands. For demonstration purpose, let's define a variable. So in Windows batch command, we can use set to define a variable let's say variable name equal to message and then say hello world okay and we want to print this out in the console output so to print anything as output in batch we will use echo command and then whenever we are referring any batch variables we should be using percentage symbol so percentage message and percentage so this is the syntax that you need to use if you want to define a variable and then print it out onto the output okay Let's assume that these are the steps that we are giving to Jenkins to perform. But in real time, these are not the actual steps. Since we are learning, I just wanted to give some basic steps to help you to understand the build process. Okay. And if you want to configure any actions after the build, then you can also click add post build action and then you can choose the appropriate one. Like you can send an email notification or you can archive the artifacts. Okay. For this initial build, we don't need to specify anything. So let's click save. Now we have configured our first job and to execute this job, we need to click build now. So then we will be getting the message saying that build scheduled and then in the build history, we can see the build information. Since this is the first build in this Jenkins UI. So that is why it got the build number as one and then a success tick mark. Okay. To see the output, you can click the green tick mark, which will take you directly to the console output screen. Here we can see all the information of this build. Since we have selected the timestamp option in the build environment, that is why it attached timestamp for each and every line. So it is saying this job was started by the user admin and then running as a system. And it is first building the workspace. And then it is also cleaning up that workspace because we have selected that option to clean up before build starts. And then first it is defining the message variable and storing hello world into that message variable. And then it is printing that hello world. Once everything is done, it is giving the status of the build. Since this is a successful build, that is why we are seeing the success message. For some reason, if the build is having some issue, then you might be seeing the status as failure. Okay. If you go back to the my freestyle demo job and then click on the workspace. So this is the workspace that it is creating. Whenever a build gets created, it will store all the related files into the workspace. Okay. To understand this, let's configure the same job again and then add a couple of other steps. This time what we will do is we will try to list all the files available in that workspace. And then we will also create a text file saying that sample text file and give the file name sample file.txt and then again we will list the directory since i'm using windows i'm using dir if you are using linux or max then you can use ls command okay once you type this information and after that you click save and then click build now again so it will create a new build so in the build history now we can see the build number two so click the green tick which will take us to the console output here you can see all the different steps right so initially it created a variable and stored the hello world message and then it printed out that message and then we have issued a dar command so it executed that command since there are no files available in the workspace my freestyle demo job directory it is giving this output and after that what we did was we created a new file with the name sample file dot txt and then we issued again the dar command since this time we have a sample file so we got the output here saying that sample file dot txt Okay, so if you go back to my freestyle demo job and then go to workspace here, you can see that sample file.txt. Okay, so whenever you execute the new build, it will try to delete this sample file because in the configuration option, we have selected delete workspace before build start. So whatever the files that are there in the workspace, those will be deleted. So this is the freestyle projects. Now let's try to create a pipeline. So let's go back to dashboard and then click new item and type my pipeline demo job okay and then from the list select pipeline and most of the configurations are same like freestyle project the only difference here is if you scroll a little bit down we will not have any build step instead we will have a pipeline so here we need to either select the pipeline script which is nothing but jenkins file or we can type the instructions directly in the script window we can also use some sample pipeline to begin with so 
click try sample pipeline and then click hello world so it will give you some sample script so this is the pipeline script so here what jenkins administrators will do is they will define different stages and then provide the steps that needs to be part of that particular stage for example here it is saying stage is hello and then and the step is echo hello world so when we execute this pipeline job then a stage with hello will be created and then inside that stage hello world message will be printed okay so in real time how these stages will looks like is maybe we will have clone stage which will clone the code from the git repository so let's say this is cloning the repository from github so we can see this output here we are not actually cloning anything i just wanted to show you these steps so that is why i'm printing out the message saying that cloning the repository from github and then define another stage you can copy the stage block and then paste it right below the curly braces this is the second stage make sure you follow the indents so the next stage should be exactly right below the flower bracket okay so here now we can say this is build stage and here we can say building the artifacts and then we can copy the stage and then paste it again here we can say test in this test stage we can define all the activities that needs to be part of this test stage so testing the build and finally we can say upload uploading the build to build repository okay so we have defined four stages in this pipeline clone build test and upload and we have given some instructions instructions are nothing but steps but in real time we will be writing some code here so that when we execute this job it will execute steps that are there in the respective stages okay so once you created all these stages click save and then click build now that will trigger this build the view will be little different than what we saw previously here everything will be shown like this so we have four stages defined like clone build test and upload and each stage it is telling how long it took to execute that stage we can also see the logs directly from here by clicking here it is telling logs of that particular stage since our pipeline is only printing a message it is showing the cloning the repository from github okay similarly you can click build to see the logs of the build building the artifacts or you can even go to that build console output and then see all these different steps so first it is staging the clone environment and then printing the message which is there in the clone stage and then after that it is executing the build stage and printing out the message that is there in the build stage and then it is executing the test stage and printing the message inside the test stage okay so this is the way we can create a pipeline jobs so we have seen how to create a freestyle project and also seen how to create a pipeline job okay now we will try to integrate our jmeter script with freestyle project and then we will see it in the pipeline as well okay so go back to dashboard and then create a new item and give name as my first freestyle jmeter job and then select freestyle project and click okay so here you need to provide the steps in the build step so here also you can select the delete workspace from the build environment and also add timestamp to the console output and then click add build steps and then click execute windows batch command okay so this is where we need to specify the cli command or non gui command so that when we trigger this build then jenkins will execute that jmeter script and will share us the status so if you recollect the cli or non gui command from our previous demos first we need to specify jmeter right when we are executing this from command prompt we are directly giving jmeter because in command prompt we have configured this jmeter in the environment variable section since here we are executing it from jenkins it is always recommended to give the complete path so go to your jmeter bin directory in this system i have installed jmeter in my d drive so d software apache jmeter bin so select the path and then go to jenkins and type it here slash jmeter dot bat so this is the complete path okay so this way we don't have any issues to execute the jmeter script and the other options are pretty much same so we should be specifying hyphen n since we want to do it in non gui or cli mode and then hyphen t here we need to specify the script path so the jmeter script is available in my desktop folder so desktop i should select this entire path and then paste it here and specify the file name so the file name is jpeg2demo.jmx and then we need to specify the results location so i also want the results to be stored in the same jmeter scripts path so i'm giving the same path information here let's say jpeg store 
demo dot jtl okay here i'm not using other options like creating the html report if you want you can also provide that additional options and then create the html report directly after the jmeter script execution okay once you give the complete path then click save and then click build now so it will execute that jmeter script and once the jmeter script is successful then we can see the results in the same folder wherever we specify the results location so since it is executing that script let's open that script and then see what is a thread group configuration so here i have given number of threads as one and then duration as 60 seconds that means this script will execute for one minute and within one minute we can see the status of this build okay let's click that link so we can see here the status of the job since the summarizer configuration is enabled in this system so that is why i can also see the output here and now it is end of the run and we can see the overall job status as success so if we go to jmeter scripts folder where we store the results we can see the jtl file so you can use this file for analysis so in jenkins there is a plugin called performance we can use that plugin to see some kind of reports in the jenkins itself okay so let me delete this file because we will be re-executing the same build and then go to dashboard and then go to manage jenkins and click plugins here click on the available plugins and type performance and select the performance plugin and click install so what it will do is it will install the performance plugin so here we can see the status as success that means the installation is completed and we need to restart the jenkins because whenever we install any plugins it is always recommended practice to restart the jenkins so it may take a minute to restart the jenkins instance and then we will be redirected to the sign in page so provide the admin user information that you have created in the beginning now go back to dashboard and then select the freestyle jmeter job go to configure because we need to do additional steps to see the results so scroll a little bit down click on add post build action and then select the publish performance test results report so it will ask us to provide the result report location so you can use this the path where it is storing the results and if you want to include any specific samplers then you can use the regex format and rest you can leave it as is and then click save okay now you click the build now again which will trigger the second build for this freestyle jmeter job and go to console output and then see the status so it is executing it once this job is successful then we can see the performance report within the jenkin itself okay so in our previous demo we have discussed about inflex db and grafana integration so you can also view the results in grafana if you have already configured the backend listener so i think in this script i have already backend listener configured so if i go to grafana i can see the results here as well okay so it's not necessary that you should always install the performance plugin and then see the results there itself we can also have this end-to-end -end configuration so you can also see the results in jenkins whenever the build started i think the job is completed so go back to jenkins now go back to my first freestyle jmeter job on the right hand side you can see the performance trend right the response time and percentage of errors you can click the performance trend so that will show you the trend reports so click trend report you can see the details if you re-execute the same build again then it will also compare the current build with the previous build to see if there are any differences okay so let's delete the jtl file from here and then re-execute the same job so click build now now we can see the comparison between the build number two and the build number three after the build three execution so let's wait for this build to be executed the job is successful again now go back to freestyle jmeter job and then click the performance trend report and then click trend like in the first build the 98th percentile was 23 milliseconds and the second build it was 17 milliseconds okay if you want to see the last report you can also click the last report which will show you complete report here's the comparison with the previous build so here you can see the comparison right so it is comparing with different transaction and providing you the detailed information so this is the way to execute jmeter script in the freestyle project now let's do the same thing using pipeline job okay so if your script is already there in the github repository then you can also call that script directly from the github repo or you can also use the same approach what we did it in the freestyle project okay since i don't have my script in github i'm going to refer the script from the desktop directory okay so let's go back to dashboard and then create a new item and then give the item name as my pipeline jmeter job and then select pipeline click ok here we need to 
go to pipeline section and then specify the script so let me paste the script here so here i have three stages defined one for clone just to print out some message saying that we are cloning this script from the github and then we are actually executing the jmh script so here we need to use this syntax to execute the batch commands if you are using linux then you should use sh and one another important thing is when we are specifying the path information you should surround an additional backward slash with the slash then only it will consider otherwise it will give you a syntax error okay and then finally we have a stage for publishing the report once you type the script click save and then click build now and it will start executing the build so it will also give you the time how long it took to execute that particular stage so here i can see clone took 93 milliseconds now it is executing the execute stage so we can also see the logs from here so this is the console output i think once the job execution is done then it will publish that report so we can also see that report in the jenkins so this particular stage is done if you go back to here now we can see the publish report also so this is the way you can configure jmeter into jenkins and execute different builds using freestyle project as well as the pipeline projects so if you want to uninstall the jenkins what you need to do is you can go to app add or remove programs and then select jenkins and then click uninstall you also need to remove the folder from c program files because some files will be stored even after uninstalling there so we need to go to program files and then delete the jenkins folder and there is one more directory which is there in the program data you also need to delete that jenkins folder to do the clean uninstallation process if you are leaving these folders there then when you try to reinstall what it will do is it will try to use the previously used data okay for other operating system like linux or mac prefer the instructions available in the jenkins official website to uninstall the jenkins software so that's it for this video thank you so much for staying till then and supporting me i hope you found this video helpful if you have any questions or want to share your experiences please feel free to leave a comment below all the video notes have been uploaded in github and you can find the link in the description if you are new to our channel please consider subscribing and also like and share this video so that others will also get benefited i'll see you with the next video in this module until then take care stay safe and keep learning